So we went over the directions. We talked about you don't have to plot a course to face the Qibla. You don't have to know how to get to Mecca in order to face the Qibla, which way to go, what's the right uh, course to take, to make a trip to Mecca. You don't have to know that to face the Qibla. We talked about the consensus, which is in Abu Hanifa's statement. We talked about how to face the Qibla. And we talked about imitating another's prayer direction. We talked about the proofs of the Qibla. We talked about the legend of the sun over the Kaaba. We talked about calculations. So we still have then this section about misguiding Muslims with optical illusions. So let's see what we have here. So the author says, misguiding Muslims with optical illusions. Some Sunni theologians said that the difference between a place and a direction is that a place is general. It does not imply a comparison. That is to say, a direction is a place, but relative to something, direction implies a comparison. Yani, something in comparison to something else. Be certain that each cardinal direction is different from the other. Yani, we need to start with something that's actual, real, and physical here before we look at something on a piece of paper and then maybe misinterpret this thing on the paper or be uh, deluded by it, be fooled by something that's not accurate. Let's understand some physical realities in the first place. Something that's observable and any person can know, even without being a scientist. Be certain that each cardinal direction is different from the other. They are not the same. This has to be clear for you in order for you to understand uh, the right rules of Qibla. This is not something that people who argue for Northeast agree to that all of the directions are different from the other. We talk about cardinal directions. They're all different from the other. They don't agree to that because they believe that these cardinal directions are just social constructs. We talked about that. What that means is they're saying north is only north because of some point that we designate on the globe. And likewise, south. And then east and west are between those. That's false. North is not north because of some point that we designate on the globe. North is the direction of North Star. Even if you don't have a globe. And south is the opposite of that. And east is the direction of sunrise, even if you don't have a globe. West is the direction of sunset, even if you don't have a globe. All these directions are different from the other. There's no way that you could physically go north and then suddenly, without turning, you're going to go south. Because they're opposites. So, a thing doesn't just become its opposite and stay existing too. That's impossible. So, we'll see here. Had they all been the same, had all the directions been the same, there would be no way to tell one direction from another. And no one would be able to understand the two opposite directions in what was reported about the Prophet. ﷺ. He said by pointing with his hand, If the sun disappeared from here, and the night came from here. The fasting person breaks his fast. So the Prophet here in this hadith, he pointed into two different directions. They're not the same. Some directions are different, but not opposites. There's a difference between different and opposite. Do you know the difference between different and opposite? Hold on. I'm asking you not about directions. I'm asking you about this concept. Different and opposite. Those two, not about directions in particular. Do you know the difference between being different and being opposites? 
for two things to be different as opposed to them being opposites. What is it? If two things are opposites, they cannot exist at the same time in the same place. But if two things are different, doesn't mean that they can't coexist. Two opposites can't coexist, but two different things without being opposites, they can. So, for example, uh, existence and non-existence, they don't go together, right? Because they're completely opposite. So it's either one or the other. They can't both be true at the same time for one thing. So, because they're opposites. But sometimes some things are just different. Different doesn't mean opposite. Like a thing could be, let's say, uh, red, but it also could be small, being red and being small, being red is one thing. Being small is something else. Those are two different things. Do they cancel each other out, though? No, they don't cancel each other out. They're just different. They're not opposites, though. But being small and not small, those cancel each other out. Being red and not red, those cancel each other out. But being small and red, those don't cancel each other out. Is that clear? Okay. So some directions are different, but they're not opposites. That means they don't cancel each other out. That's why it's possible to have southeast and northeast and southwest and northwest. Because they're not opposites of each other. South and east aren't opposites of each other. So they can come together. They can blend. But some directions are polar opposites of each other. So it is impossible to have east-west or west-east or north-south or south-north. Is that clear? Uh, would someone contradict this? Would someone put a string over a globe to prove the Kibla? So now we have this diagram here. All right, Nuh Keller diagram one. So some people said, you never responded to Nuh Keller. Yeah, I did actually, but I didn't respond to his whole textbook though. There's a big fat textbook, but I just took one thing from Yanni, not only one, one thing, a couple things, some diagrams. And let's take a look at those. So here he has, we have this one, it's called Nuh Keller diagram one. So you can see here. Uh, they called it figure three, footsteps across the North Pole. Now you look at this, you see a square here. I don't know how good you are at understanding maps, but this is what he has here. Uh, if you look into the four corners, one corner, if I start at the top left corner, there's a arrow going in uh, to the corner, it says south. Then there's an arrow in the other corner, the opposite corner. That says south too. And then down, there's another arrow. That one says south too. Look how it has south going in two different directions at the same time. And he has, Yanni, now the third corner doesn't say south, but it says north going the other way. So that means south is the opposite of this arrow in the corner. But now, if you're following me, I'm in the lower left corner. And it says north right there with an arrow, right? So if you follow that straight line, the very same line is south too. North-south is impossible. Uh -huh. The, the, the line we started at, the corner we started at, the top left corner has an arrow going south into the corner. And then the opposite corner in the bottom right has line going south, the opposite way. So what that means is this line is north and south at the same time. And just like the other line, the darker one that we looked at, that's north and south at the same time, according to this diagram. Uh -huh. Now, someone would say, oh, you are so ignorant. This makes perfect sense. He says, because the earth is not flat. 
What this is, is this. It's that, don't you know how to read a globe? Don't you know how on the globe, when you go up towards the North Pole, all the lines converge? So no matter where you are on the globe, if you go north, you're going to wind up in one spot, same spot, eventually, which is North Pole. All the directions are leading to, when you go north, North Pole. They say, so that's what this is saying here. They're saying, that's what, that's what this is saying here. So this is perfectly fine. No, it's not perfectly fine, though. Uh, because this person here doesn't really know how to read the map. We're going to read what's here, but I'm just now, before I scroll off of it, I'm taking a look at it and talking to you. So, what do we have here? Now, you also, down at the bottom of this diagram, you see it says east and west. And east and west, the arrows for east and west are not straight. They are turning. Uh, what this means, everything in this square means, every direction is the other direction. Because, for example... You see this west has an arrow there. Compare that arrow to the arrow in the upper left corner. The arrow that says west, compare it to the arrow in the upper left corner. That's the same direction. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and same thing for east. And compare it to the arrow in the upper right corner. Uh, he does, not on purpose, he's not saying that. He is saying every direction is the same direction, but not on purpose. Uh, what he attempted to do here was to flatten the globe, the top of the globe or the bottom of it. But here the top, of course, because it says North Pole. To render it into a flat image. And what he wants to do is answer a question. Because we've been saying all this time, how could it be a straight line? I've been saying, it's not even a straight line. It's a giant right turn. When you put that string on the globe, from New York, for example, to Mecca, you think that's a straight line. And what it really is, is a giant right turn. So what those people say is, no, that's a straight line. It's not a right turn. Look at it like this. And then they just turn it so you look at it from certain perspective. So that you look at the line from above, from a bird's eye view, looking down at the globe. Not sideways, but from above. When you look at that line from above, turn straight because of your perspective. Not because it's really straight, but because you're looking at it from above. Would you say? Yeah. Uh, it's like a bridge. Like if you were standing on the ground and you saw a bridge, then you would see it arcing, right? It starts at one side of a river, then goes up, and then comes back down on the other side of the river, right? So you can see the arc of the bridge when you're looking at it from the side. But what if you were in a helicopter, for example, and you're looking down at the bridge? What is it going to look like? It's going to look like just a straight line, right? Yeah. Because the arc, the arc goes away because your perspective changed. You don't see the arc. All you see is one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge from above. So it just looks like a straight line. But if you were on the ground and you were looking not from above, but looking at the bridge across from you, you'd see the arc of the bridge going up and coming back down. It's like that here. When they put the string on the globe, when they put the string on the globe, they're telling you, this arc, don't worry about that. Just look at it this way. And then they turn it so that when you see the string, you're looking at it from uh, a bird's eye view. That means looking down on the string, on the surface of the globe. And the arc goes away because you turned it to look at it from above. So all you see is one straight line. But if all you do is just twist it, 
and look at it from another angle, you're going to see the curve. You understand? Okay. So that curve that really physically exists on a globe, because the globe is itself curved. And then if you just turn the uh, angle of the globe and look at that line from a certain perspective, look straight. This is what he did here in this square. He wanted to render it on a flat surface for you, so you see it flat. And what he's really getting at here is this person is going over a curve. The meaning of this picture here is that this, these footsteps are going over a giant curve. They're not walking straight only. Understand? Yeah. Now, we're going to also see, I think, inshallah, when we read, that uh, this is very deceptive. And amongst the things that's so deceptive about this is that if this dot were the North Pole, truly, like if that were the North Pole represented on any globe, do you know how big that dot is? Not even all those footsteps together won't show up inside that dot in the middle. All those footsteps together will disappear inside that dot. That area is so vast inside that dot there in the middle. That dot right there has enough space for like so much land and trees and all kinds of stuff. If that dot right there is supposed to be the North Pole that's on the globe, then those footsteps belong to the, uh, the biggest man who ever lived. Someone who's able to walk across the continents. He can, he can just hop over the ocean in a single bound. He can take foot, one foot from Russia and step right over into Alaska. That's how big these footsteps are. In one step. Do you understand? Yeah. And now, let's say, though, someone say, no, no, no. That's not the North Pole that's represented on the globe. That's much closer. That's zeroed in. Then if that's zeroed in, then this spot, no person's going to find that spot. You're never going to find any spot like that. You walk around with your compass, you're not going to find, say, ah, here's the spot. You know, I mean, because this spot right here, if this is zeroed in, and that's just a regular human footprint like yours or mine. So that's like saying, if you look at your own foot right now, that's like saying, pole right there at the North Pole. I would have been standing there at that dot, successfully found that spot where everywhere around me is south. You're not going to ever find any spot like that. There's no single spot. In all of the dot of that's called North Pole that you're going to find where this, every direction from you is south. You understand? Let's see what we have here. It says, the goal of this image is to delude a Muslim into thinking that it is possible to go north and then south without ever turning. That's the goal there. How could you go north and then south? You know why this line is here? Because Mecca is really southeast of us. So he's trying to explain to you, how come the line ends southeast? Yeah, the line that started from New York was northeast, but the line that ended at Mecca was southeast. How's that? Doesn't that mean we turned? So you say, no, 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 guys, don't worry, you didn't turn. Let me show you how you can go north and then go south without ever turning. All right, I'll draw it up for you on a piece of paper. So the goal of this image is to delude a Muslim into thinking that it is possible to go north and then south without ever turning. Or you can reverse it. To turn while staying in the same direction. So that's what this line means. The line from the bottom left corner up to the top right corner or any of the other lines in the corner. Their meaning is one of those. Either it means you can go from north to south without turning or it means you can turn while staying in the same direction. So someone will say, yeah, it's right there on paper. You're, you, you didn't go to school very well. 
They tell him, this is not even something that you could even demonstrate or witness or practice in any way whatsoever. Show me right now your ability to go north and then go south without turning. You say, I can't do it. It needs so much space, needs so much distance. That's why I'm telling you, it needs so much distance. That's why really these footsteps are someone who's giant. This is not zeroed in at the North Pole. That's what somebody will say if you bring up the fact that the, the footprints are so big. He's going to say, no, it's zeroed in. It's not zeroed in because if it's zeroed in, that's not enough space. That's not enough space to go from north to south without turning according to you. You can go from north to south without turning. Show me. You'll say, no, I can't do it. You need many miles. So how many miles did this footstep go? Does this guy go? How many footsteps did it take for him to go so many miles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In twelve footsteps, he went, I don't know, what's that? Thousands of miles. Or else, if that's zoomed in, means you can demonstrate for me. Show me now. In twelve footsteps, show me how you can go from north to south without turning. You won't be able to. Because this is fallacious image here. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So, the goal of this image is to delude a Muslim into thinking that it is possible to go north and then south without ever turning, or to turn while staying in the same direction. That's either that's what this line, that one line from the bottom left corner to the top right corner means either one of those two. You can go from north to south without turning, or you can turn while staying in the same direction. It also links travel and movement to the prayer direction, which that's not a condition. You don't know. You don't have to know how to get to the Kaaba. You don't have to plot a course for your Qibla to be valid. And you don't have to know the shape of the earth for your Qibla to be valid. The translation of this diagram is, this is why Northeast prayer direction is valid, even in northernmost Canada, although Mecca is south of the southernmost USA. Either you did not really make any turn, and it is all one direction, or you turn and stayed in the same direction. That's the meaning of this diagram here. So, so that's why I didn't respond to everything in Noah Keller's book. Because I figured that's enough right there. That's the, this is the first few pages of his book. That would mean that north and south are the same direction. And that's what this, that's what this image promotes, that north and south are the same direction. So that person's always going to say to you, no, because this is at the North Pole. So we already addressed how to deal with the North Pole issue. So if you need to review that, review that. Which is what? Which is that you person who wants to keep talking about North Pole, you never even went there. And if you ever went there, according to the images that are available that claim that's the North Pole, it's just like anywhere else. You're not going to be finding some place where every direction is really south. That dot that represents North Pole on a globe it's just like all the other dots on the globe that like represent cities. So if you look on the globe, there's a dot that says New York. So what if somebody put some footsteps next to that dot that says New York? It would be so big, right? Because millions of people fit inside that dot. Uh, that would mean that north and south are the same direction, which is exactly what this image is saying. It is therefore valid to call the bold line in this diagram north-south or south-north. This line from bottom left corner to top right corner, it would be valid to call this line north-south or to call it south-north. And it's practically named that on the, on the page itself. But you just separated the words, put north in one corner and south in the other corner. So... Worst case scenario, this is malicious, putting this picture here to fool the Muslims. But that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario that he himself didn't even know the fallaciousness of what he's putting there. SubhanAllah, he won't be hamdi. 
However, this optical illusion, that's what this is. This is an optical illusion because you're going to look at it and get the wrong impression. Like, okay, really, if this were a really accurate diagram here, then that bold line is not straight. If someone really understands how to look at a globe, then really that line is not straight. It only looks like it's straight because of the angle is presented to you. That's not one direction. That's two different directions. There's a turn there. This is another reason why, like I was saying, they believe that going north is like walking up a mountain. They believe north is up. Because the only way, because really what north means here in this bottom left corner, it really it equates, it equates to up. And south in the top right corner equates to down. And that's the only way you can stay in the same direction and not turn, but somehow there's a curve, which is going up and then going back down. Yes, they are mixing the relative and cardinal directions exactly. Because if this was really a case of going up and coming back down, it's still going to be the same direction, though. It's not going to be north and then turn south. Yes. Yeah, that's right. We just said the same thing. Yeah. No, no problem. We just really should say is scratch out north from that corner and put up. And scratch out south in the other corner and put down. So this optical illusion truly hides a right turn. It hides a right turn. As we shall see, God willing. Here, expect any of three outcomes from anyone stubbornly arguing for Northeast Kibla. One, to drop out of the debate without conceding. He won't give up, but he won't continue the conversation. We lost, though. Two, to explicitly say that it is correct that one can turn and stay in the same direction. Don't be surprised. I heard them say all these things. That's how I was able to compile this. Yanni, this, I didn't compile this from imagining how the debate goes back and forth. I compiled it by debating with them all the time, long time. We had sometimes long debates about these. Now nobody debates about it. Uh, no, I never asked anybody that, but that's applicable. And three, to explicitly say that one can move in two opposite directions without turning and without moving backwards. So those last two, yes, they said that to me. But to be honest, I don't recall a particular conversation. But, yeah. If he says, you ignorant one, you can go in two directions without turning. Or you can turn without changing directions because the earth is not flat. Yeah, the, all that, they, yes, for sure. They said that to me. Absolutely. That's going to be when you get them into that corner there. They're not offering this. But you argue with them until you get them into this corner here. And then they're going to say, no, yeah, you can go in two directions without turning. And you can turn without changing directions because the earth is not flat. So then that's when you say to him, show me, go in two directions without turning. Or turn without changing directions since the earth is not flat. He will be unable. That's subhanAllah. Something that he cannot do and he never witnessed. He can't even do it himself. He's going to swear to God that it can be done. But why would he say he can't do it here? If he says, I cannot demonstrate that for you because I would need vast distance to cover. That's all. This is only answer here. Then say, then you don't have any evidence more than a theory. That's all you have now. What you're telling me is your theory. It's nothing that you can demonstrate. It's nothing that you can show me. And in fact, you're telling me right now that in, according to this diagram that you rely on, that somebody in 12 steps, he walked across continents. 
because he needs vast distance to cover. This is not a zero in. This is not a zoom in here. Or else show me. If that's a zoom in, then demonstrate for me. 12 footsteps he has there. He won't be able to. So then what do you have then? You're arguing with me about a theory. All you have is a theory. And what encourages you in your theory is that you put a string over a globe. And the issue here is that you really don't know how to read the globe. But you thought you knew what you were doing. So you thought you were on something there. So if he says, I can't demonstrate that for you because I would need vast distance to cover. And then you say to him, you don't have any evidence then. You don't have anything more than a theory. All you're doing is telling me an idea, something that you are imagining. It's just a theory, nothing that you could prove in any way whatsoever. And you know, if you want to insult my intelligence or if you want to insult my education, it doesn't change the fact that this is you cannot prove this. And you can't wish it into existence. You're wanting it to be true is not going to make it true. It doesn't matter what shape the earth is. What you are saying is impossible. Oh, educated one. Directions are not stuck to the surface of the ground so that the earth's shape would matter. If he says, regardless of the names, north or south, it is a single direction without turning. The direction of forward. So now we already know. He's mixing relative directions into the mix. He has to get out of, in order to try to make sense of what he's attempting here, he has to get out of the cardinal directions. So he's going to resort to the relative directions. He's going to say it is one direction, forward. And they always say that, by the way. Once you corner them here into this. Once you corner them into the fact that they're dealing with a crooked, a crooked line, they're going to say it's not really crooked. Because you're continually going forward. But then they're going to add what's a lie. Without going right or left, that's not true. The string over the globe from New York to Mecca, for example, is a giant right turn. How could somebody who claims to know how to read a map not see that's a right turn? If you drive a car and you know how to look at a map, then you know that's a right turn on that globe when you put the string there. So if he says, regardless of the names of north or south, it is a single direction without turning. The direction of forward. Then say, if that is all that matters, if, if the direction of forward is all that matters, then why are you calling your line northeast? Why don't you just call it forward? Mm -hmm. And also, the directions in the issue of Qibla are the cardinal directions, not the relative directions. So if he says, prove it, then say God's statement. By the star, they are guided. Does the star guide them forward or back and backward? Does the star guide them forward and backward or north and south? Guides them north and south. The ayah didn't guide us to the star so that we can go forward and backward. Guided us so we can go north and south and east and west. A Quranic Qibla verse cites cardinal directions specifically. To Allah belongs the east and the west. So whichever way you turn in voluntary prayer upon an animal while traveling, then that wajah, that wajah, that direction is valid to Allah. That's the meaning of the ayah. And also another ayah about the Qibla mentions the cardinal directions. The fools amongst the Jews and hypocrites and pagans will say, what turned them from their Qibla that they were facing? <inaudible> say to Allah belongs east and west, not forward and backward here, east and west. Yahdi man yasha'u ila siratin mustaqim. He guides whomever he wills to a straight path. A correct Qibla. 
And there's a hadith also about the Qibla that mentions the Qibla and mentions the cardinal directions, not the relative ones. Since the companions were in Medina, they were north of the Kaaba, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught them. إِذَا أَتَيْتُمُ الْغَائِطُ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةِ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا بِبَوْلٍ وَلَا غَائِطُ If you go to the lavatory, do not face the Qibla. And do not turn your back to it while urinating or defecating. Yani don't face it while urinating or defecating. And don't turn your back to it while urinating or defecating. وَلَكِنْ شَرِّكُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا Rather, face east or west. He told them that for their position. Turn east or west because you're you're north of the Kaaba. So that means if you face north or south, you're going to be urinating or defecating in the direction of the Qibla. So don't do that. So face east or west. And we even have the documentation of Mujtahid. Abu Hanifa, he said, Al-Mashriqu Qiblatu Ahli Al-Maghrib. East is the Qibla of the people of the West. Wal-Maghribu Qiblatu Ahli Al-Mashriq. West is the Qibla of the people of the East. Wal-Janubu Qiblatu Ahli Shimal. South is the Qibla of the people of the North. Wal-Shimalu Qiblatu Ahli Al-Janub. North is the Qibla of the people of the South. So, so there's your evidence. You have a load of evidence there. The directions for the Qibla are the cardinal directions, not the relative directions. Completely lacking self-awareness, he does not have a religious proof that the directions in the Qibla issue are anything but cardinal. Yani, this same one who's telling you, what's your proof? He doesn't even have any proof of what he's saying. If the Northeaster were not one of those who disregard the scholars, and he found authentic scholarly talk about the Qibla, in which they mention forward or behind or the like, all of that is secondary explanation based on the proofs presented. Yeah, I mean, we're not saying it's impossible to say forward or backwards inside of the discussion of Qibla. But that's going to be, yeah, I mean, not the fundamental. That's going to be when you're explaining details, elaborating something. That one would merely have selected those quotes for something they do not support if he finds something that mentions forward or backwards or something. Another problem with this optical illusion is that it implies or suggests that there is a place where east, west, and north all become south. We talked about that. The meaning of this diagram here is that there's a place which is in the middle where every direction is south. So then in that middle there, east, west, and north have all disappeared. That's impossible. Yani, when I say it's impossible, that is, for a person to stand there, are you going to stand in a place that only has one direction? How can you fit your body? Your body has back, front, left, and right inside a place that has only one direction. The way we are created, our body is going to face, Yani, we're going to have something of our body you have front and you have two sides and you have a back so that's your four directions right there east west north and south how would somebody whose body is formulated to uh that some part of his body is going to be in one of the four directions how could he get to a place where there's only one direction that's clear yeah Another problem with this optical illusion is that it implies or suggests that there's a place where east, west, and north all become south. Is that part clear? Okay, so south is only one direction out of four, right? Okay, so your body is made to fit inside of four directions, right? Because you have a front, a back, a left. You have a front, a back, a left, and a right. So if you face east, for example, your back's going to be west, your right's going to be south, and your left's going to be north. Right? Okay, so how can somebody go somewhere where there's no direction but south? Yanni, how would you be able to fit there? You can't fit in a place that does, only has one direction. 
In the imaginary world, meaning theory, this place is where imaginary lines converge. Imaginary lines converge, and when a person doesn't know how to read the globe properly, then he's going to think that in real life, there's a place where every direction is south. These are lines that they would turn around and altogether reject, reject if they're used to debunk Northeast Kibla, because they do. Yanni, when you show them how those lines, which is latitude and longitude coordinates, don't really support Northeast, if you know how to show them, but look, here's latitude and longitude. And so according to that, the Kibla is Southeast because it's coordinates. Did you ever play that game, uh, Battleship? All right, you know about it though, where you put the, the things and then you call out, you call out coordinates. So you say like A4. And then it'll tell you if it's a hit or miss, and then you put a, a peg on the coordinate. That's how the globe is. Even if it's round, that's how you read it. There's a grid there. Flat map and globe are read the same. It's the same grid. It's just shaped different. If it's a globe, the lines are going to converge at the top and the bottom. If it's a flat map, the lines are going to open up. That's all. It's the same grid. So in those very same lines, when you show them how this debunks Northeast Kibla, they're going to reject and refute the lines and tell you why they're not relevant. Those same lines that they'll tell you they're not relevant when it comes to every direction being south at the North Pole, according to them, these lines are impeccable. So in the real world, this place does not exist. In this theoretical place where south goes in four directions, a person could face the direction behind him. See that sentence? A person could face the direction behind him. How are you going to face the direction behind you? What would that mean? Turn? Someone said that means to turn. Okay, so now it's the same direction though. The direction that was behind you is the same direction that was in front of you according to you, because every direction is south, according to you. That direction would be his right-left. The direction that's in front of him would be the direction that's behind him. Which direction would that be? That would be his right-left. You understand? Because it's saying all the directions are the same direction. And that's absurd. When you put it in those words, it becomes very clear that that's absurd. So, and when you put it this way, he's going to say, La, you are so ignorant. So I would say to him, you never went to the North Pole. You never experienced anything that you're defending now. Uh, everything you're saying is based on theory. Something that you have no way to prove in any way whatsoever. Or else show me. There is no real situation in which someone who wants to pray would be seeking such a borderline for the Qibla. He does not use a drawn map and a compass, for instance, and then look at his surroundings and then say, ah, X marks the spot. If I take one step forward, I'll cross an imaginary line here and I'll be in the West and no longer in the East. And hence my Kibla's like this. But if I take a step backwards, I'll be behind that imaginary line. And now my Kibla is like this. So there's no place in the world like that. That's clear. It's like he's in a cartoon looking for a, for a treasure or something. And there's an imaginary line that he's trying to find and cross over. Perhaps the photographs of the North Pole, which is said to be a place without stable landmass. This North Pole that they, they're sweating this North Pole so hard. And what is said about the North Pole actually is that there's no stable landmass there. There might be ice there maybe sometimes or there might be just water there. So it's not even a place, according to that, that they could even go there to test what they are saying so that they could observe it. Perhaps the photographs of the North Pole are more accurate than these theories. They show it to be a place like every other with four cardinal directions, including the direction of sunrise. Certainly Allah brings the sun from the east. How could so many Muslims fall into such a massive blunder? Part of it is Western education that speaks about the creation of Allah ignorantly and not knowing what to believe as a Muslim. 
Some non-Muslims have even written articles insulting North American Muslims for a mistake not made by a middle schooler. And yet, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's what Ibrahim said. Yeah, that's the same ayah that we took previously. So you're going to use it in its proper place. What does it prove? It proves that the sun comes from the east. So you're going to use it in its proper place. When you need that proof, then you're going to bring it. Like, for example, when he tries to tell you, uh, well, east is, we know east by such and such. Say, la, we know east by the sunrise. So then if he says, la, 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 no, that's the, uh, you're ignorant. It's like this. Then you give him the ayah, for example. Yet another problem with this diagram is that the footsteps truly represent a person tall enough to walk across continents in single steps. The only way the center dot could validly represent anywhere in the world on which we live, it would have to represent an area wide enough for four directions. And even the dot that's on the top of the globe, where all the lines converged, where an ignorant person thought that that means every direction is south, that dot, inside that dot, there's four directions. Inside that dot, there's enough space for cities. Subhanallah They think in their imagination that that dot, you could just get there and you'll be standing there like you like, like how I'm sitting in my chair right now. That dot is, is just like as isolated as the chair I'm sitting in. And I could be right there. La, that dot's probably bigger than the whole city. Uh, all right. We still have some other optical illusions to look at. Uh, oh, hold on a second. The difference between a map and the real earth, because that's what we're getting at, all what we're saying, that those people are talking based on theory. So it's important to understand the difference between a map and the real earth. There are very important differences between a map and the real earth. This is very important here. If you are unaware of them, you will be confused without realizing. How do you determine directions in each respective case? Like for them, the way you determine directions is by a map. For learned Muslims practicing the sunnah, the way to determine directions is by the signs that Allah created, not by the map. In the real physical world, a learned Muslim would look for the sunrise for east and for sunset for west and the north star for north and put his back to it for the south, for example. This is for the Muslim who wants to practice like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna khiyara ibadi Allahi alladheena yura'oona shamsa wal qamar yura'oona shamsa wal qamar wal nujuma wal adhillata li dhikri Allah. Surely the best of the slaves of Allah are those who observe the sun the moon, the stars, and the shadows for the remembrance of Allah, which is the prayer. A map, on the other hand, does not have such indicators. Yani, how do you find directions on a map? Not by sun and stars and moon. You use something completely different. A map uses a grid called latitude and longitude lines for those people who argue for the wrong directions, like they imagine that the real earth has latitude and longitude lines. The globe represents the earth for them. The fact that it is by this grid on a map that directions are represented that makes putting a string over a globe to prove the direction one of the most uninformed, uneducated things a person could do. You're supposed to read the grid, not put a string over the globe.
those imaginary markers do not determine any real directions. The imaginary markers, Yanni, the lines, the grid that's on the map, that's how you use the map to find directions on the map. Not in the real Earth. For the real Earth, use the sun and stars, etc. So that's how they're mixed up. So to them, the Earth is like the globe, and the Earth practically has imaginary lines on it. And those imaginary lines on the earth, that's how we find directions on the real earth, by the imaginary lines on the earth. That's their way. That's clear? Those imaginary markers do not determine any real directions. Also, the globe is not a Kibler proof anyway. The globe itself is not even a Kibler proof. We're not arguing about the globe to submit it as a Kibler proof. We're just saying you're not even reading the globe properly. On the real Earth, North America is closer to the Arctic, where it is cold, and Mecca is in the tropics, where it is warm, south of the USA, the direction the birds fly to escape the cold of winter. Yani, Mecca is closer to the equator, the equator is south of us. On maps, latitude and longitude coordinates put Mecca east and south of the USA. Mecca's, Mecca's latitude coordinates are 21 degrees north of the equator. So the equator south of us. And the equator is south of Mecca too. The equator is south of both USA and Mecca. What are Mecca's coordinates according to the globe? 21 degrees north of the equator. Which is south of all coordinates in the United States or Canada. Key West Florida among the southernmost points in the United States if it's not the most. Yeah, the Key West Florida was as far south in the United States as I could find, personally, in my own research. Key West Florida, among the southernmost points in the United States, is at 24 degrees north of the equator. That means it's north of Mecca. Mecca is 21 degrees north. Key West Florida, which is the southern part of Florida, southern part of Florida. So it means we're trying to go as far south in the United States as we can. 24 degrees north. So that means it's still north of Mecca. So you're not going to face due east until you get into Mexico. All of the United States and Canada is south of east. Until you get down into Florida, then it's almost like it's east, as you can see how close they are. 21 degrees north, 24 degrees north. It's like it's almost due east. It's still just a little bit south, though. These coordinates, any person can find them. Any person who knows how to read a, a map, any map, they know what this means. 21 degrees north, 24 degrees north. They know that means, then, the one that's 24 degrees north is north of the one that's 21 degrees north. The one that's 21 degrees north is south of the one that's 24 degrees north. That's, who's the one who didn't go to school if somebody would deny that? But they know that. They'll say, yes, that's true. But let me tell you why you're still supposed to face northeast. And then they tell you all the stuff they said. Also, South America must face northeast. Who is ignorant about geography here? How could southernmost Chile face northeast and northernmost Canada also face northeast? That's a question. If you ask one of them. I remember when I, I said, if this question doesn't convince them, like I thought, really, this has got to be the question that makes a person say, you're right. We've been facing the wrong way. How could southernmost Chile face northeast and northernmost Canada also face northeast? So what was the answer? To answer this, one of them would use a distorted flat map after discrediting every flat map for being distorted. It will show you this one that I'm showing you now. You see there, I didn't make that up. That's what they did. They told me that. That's how I know about it. So they have, they say, look at this. And then they have the, from the northern part of Canada to 
the Arabia and from the north, southern part of Chile also to Arabia, they managed to find a way to make it have the same two same arrows. So they said, look, that's why they're both North Face, you see? So hold on a second. I thought you said flat maps don't work. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. Yes, yes. All of that to convince you or to not be wrong, yes. So this reveals their great misunderstanding. They believe, because of not knowing how to read a map, that east is north of west. This picture right here, the meaning of it is that east is north of west. Thus, according to them, the entire western hemisphere, its northern part and its southern part, must face northeast. And this is clearly absurd. It is as if they are saying that an entire corner of the earth is missing because Siberia faces southwest, Australia faces northwest, South America faces northeast, and according to them, no one faces southeast. Take a look at this map. You see that red line, that red arrow there? That's United States and Canada, according to them. So who should be facing southeast? No one, just there's a whole corner of the earth missing. Yeah, I mean, the black arrows on this map are correct. It's the red one that's off. That red one represents what the people who face the wrong direction do. Whether Mecca is south of the USA or not is not actually the question at hand. Yanni, that's a fact. However, they most likely will never willingly confess to the fact. Some may end the conversation if you insist that he answers with a mere unadulterated and unexplained yes or no. Tell me yes or no with no explanation. I don't want your commentary. I just want to know the bare answer. On this earth that is not a map, and this earth that doesn't have latitude or longitude lines drawn on it, is Mecca physically south of USA? Yes or no? Uh, if that's your condition, yes or no, with no explanation at all, he, then he doesn't want to have this conversation. Yeah, whether Mecca is south of the USA or not is not actually the question at hand. Why that's not the question at hand? Because this really is a fact. That's not something we're trying to debate and figure out. Is it true or is it not true? Yeah, yeah I mean, when you debate with that person, you would be... Telling them, it's in Southeast, don't you know? Let me try to show you. Let me help you. But the fact of the matter that really, in reality, it is South of us, though. So that's not, it's not disputable. How, that's the meaning. It's not the question at hand means not disputable in reality. It's a fact. However, they most likely will never willingly confess to that fact. Just to come out and say, yes, Mecca is South and East of our position. Or just the word south. East, yeah, they'll say east. South part, never. Some may end the conversation if you insist that he answers with a mere unadulterated and unexplained yes or no. Just tell me yes or no. Don't give me any paragraph or sentence. Don't give me any qualification. I just want to know your bare answer to my question. The question itself only requires yes or no, and that's all I want to hear as your answer. So if you restrict them this way, and then you ask him this question. On this earth that is not a map, this earth that does not have latitude and longitude lines drawn on it, is Mecca physically south of USA? Don't give me anything but yes or no. One word. If you restrict him this much, he probably will not answer this question and he'll just be done with the conversation with you. That's clear? Wa billahi tawfiq.